All right, so Jose Temple. Looks like they've got the Fiend problem under control, but it couldn't hurt to drop in. Jose Temple is one of those really nice places where when you load here, uh, this chapter, basically, once again, there's nothing to do, but there's something really important here. This game sets up that there are three factions, Youth League, New Yevon, Machine Faction. Currently, a huge part of the story is that the leaders of two of those factions are missing. One of them isn't missing, though. Gipple of the Machine Faction is still around right in plain view. With the current situation, we had to turn away all the applications. If you really need to dig, go apply in the building over there. Well, we already did that, so that's cool. And what does this guy say? He says, we may complain about Gipple a lot, but when he's around, we are strong. We count on his... Not his. We count on him. Damn... Damned if we ever tell him that, though. Oh, my God. I'm getting good at about, uh, our bed. Awesome. Hey, it's Sid's little girl. He's such a ladies' man. I have a name. She sounds like a five-year-old there. You seem close. We made quite the couple. Oh. Woo! You did know we choik. What are you saying? <laughs> Riku's always good for a laugh. If you're here about digging, this isn't the best time. Well, there were fiends here too, right? Want us to clean up for ya? Fiend hunting? What? You guys give up the sphere gig? Temporarily. Right now, we're helping people out. Maybe you'd like to hire us? Nope. Yeah, wait, you came out with some- You already took care of Sin. Hmm. We can't go running to you every time we get into trouble. Hmm. I watch my own back. Hmm. Show off. <laughs> well, be careful. You too. Right. Come on. Oh, I love this scene. I love this scene. Yuna seemed so sincere when she said, well, be careful, right? So sincere. Oh, that seems so good because it sets up like there's some big history between uh, Riku and, Gi uh, and Gipple and you're sort of like focusing on that. But Pain was weird about him in a previous chapter. We all saw it. And then here, she didn't say anything. She hung about in the background so well, I kind of forgot she was there. And she's like, let's just leave. And Gipple like looked at her a bit weird. What, what are fiends doing in a place like this anyway? We'll take care of the problems. There's no need to worry. So that's it. So here you go. You get your bonus thing there with uh, Gipple. Now, just for what it's worth, if you head towards the camera right now and go to that bridge, that screen there, it's really good for matchmaking and publicity and stuff like that. So you may as well do that while you're playing. I'll do that later off screen. Though. As for the comm sphere there, uh, we do have one to drop, but it's inside the temple, so you don't have to worry. And there you go. That's Jose done. How about we head back to the M's now and go to the moon flow. So Toby's big show is underway. Do you want to go check it out? So, uh... There have been several reasons to think that the whole arc with Tobley's show is kind of weird, right? Like, we hired a band, and then we hired a band again, and, like, the, the stuff we did in Makalani was just kind of weird. It just didn't seem to be paced very well already, and now it's going to seem even more odd. Uh, so we come back to the Moonflow. Now, remember, we've done everything perfectly. We sold all the tickets. We, we've been awesome. So all the people here say, I hope there's more to Toby show than that. I can't think about the show until I track down the goods I lost. There isn't any shoe puffs in the show. That's boring. Wait, what goods did you lose? I can't think about the show until I check down the goods I lost. Look at the Hypello back there in the background. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, my God. Do you know how they did that as well? I bet that they just have... This is a perspective trick. That's clearly a pre-rendered background, not actually traversable terrain with depth. So what I think they've done is they've shrinked Hypello models to be really small and then made them float and made sure that Yuna stands in front of them. Guarantee you that's what they've done. And think about it. There you go. Look, they're just very small floating high fellow. They're not high fellow in the background. Guarantee. Guarantee. Oh, that's so cool. Like, if that one to the right was shifted ever so slightly forward, he'd be clipping in front of that, like, bell thing. Or that hanging thing. Ah, oh, that's amazing. All right, anyway, look, 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 look. You, Benzo. There aren't any shoe puffs in the show. That's boring. Let's matchmake to Benzo, guys. Here we go. Matchmake. Do you believe in destiny? You've turned her off. Really? I'm not surprised. All right, so we did everything perfectly. How's the show going, Tobley? What have you got for us this chapter? What thrilling adventures with the Hypello? Selling tickets. Well, we've got Shinra dropping a commsphere. If I install a commsphere, we can watch the show from Sussex. Cool. 
Now, I'll, I'll be honest. I like the music in the background. It's not very Final Fantasy. It's definitely not very Final Fantasy X-y. But it sounds cool. And this is the music they're putting on. So, uh, there is a crowd. We can't talk to the crowd. The crowd seems sort of entertained. And there are three people up there. Banging on the drums and playing the harp and stuff. Now, if we never, in the previous chapter, got those three mu musicians from Makalania, there would be different people up on the car. If we never sold lots of tickets, basically no one would be here. And depending on how we do, changes this following cutscene. Oh, this won't do. It won't do at all. We finally put it on in the show, of course. What do you mean? There's no passion, no climax. No, 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 no. Oh, shut up. What do you mean? We did everything perfect. And you still couldn't get the show right? Totally. Come on. Talk to him again. I can't run a show without climactic passion. I must have miscalculated. This wasn't supposed to happen at all. Hmm. Uh, don't worry, Toby. I'm sure your next show will make up for it. I'm sorry, but she sounded just like Timmy Turner from Fairly Old Parents there. Like it was the same voice. Next show? How can there be a next show when the first show made the next show a no show? Well, one thing surely for sure. I need to attract celebrities to attract an audience. Oh, God, I see where this is going. Got any celebrities in mind? Yuna, no. Well, let's see. Let's see the most celebrated celebrity. No, no, no. Don't pretend. Yuna. No, 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 no. Yuna, run. Good pain. What's wrong? Don't ask. Just run. Run now. Run fast. Yes, listen to her. Go. I, d I don't want to do this. Um, okay. Good. Excellent. Run. Wait, wait, wait. Just a moment. No. Oh, Keep he running. fell over. Hey. What's gotten into you? Do you really need to ask? You know what he's planning, right? This is our big chance. <laughs> Riku <laughs> knows. <laughs> and so does Yuna. This is our big chance. It might be fun. So that, see, you see that? It's like, oh, okay. So let's go do it. Totally. The most joyous of joys. I would do anything if only I were to, mind to give to my audience. But wait. It, uh, it doesn't happen. And we've done that correctly. That's fine. We, we leave now. That's it. So the whole cutscene acts like we're not we're, we're supposed to ignore pain, and that was, and it's like broken in two. It's weird because basically, us performing that will happen, but in chapter five, which is like ages forward in time, which is weird. But there you go. That's that's the moon flow, guys. Just for a little bit of fun, I will show you. Uh, we've dropped the comments for that's fine. I'll show you the alternate version of that scene from our chaos world. Where we did nothing, which is pretty funny. There are actually like five different versions of the scene, but this is the most extreme too. All right, you know how I said we were going to do the M's, guys. All right, the M's. Yeah, we did Meehan, we did Moonflow. Let's do Mount Gagazet next. Man, there's a lot of M's. Mount Gagazet, that counts. That totally counts. What are you talking about? It's not G. And uh, actually, this is pretty cool because number one, it's one of the most key missions you can do in the entire game. This will determine the fate of an entire race and the life or death of a main character. And the second we go there, we'll get a dress sphere. So some of the younger Ronso are planning on defying Kamari's orders and attacking the Guado. Hmm, sounds like a Ronso problem, but still. Damn right, we want to go to Mount Gagazet. Oh my God. And after Gagazet, we, we're going to do like the greatest story stuff. In, in the, the entire chapter. Oh my god, it's gonna be great. Alright, so loading in, we get Shinra with a comm sphere. Setting up a comm sphere here, my tech laughs at the cold. Alright, cool. Yeah, I'm doing such horrible noises for Shinra. I'm so sorry, guys. I don't even know what that was. I'm trying to do like the, I don't know, weird gummy thing he's got going on. Yuna must leave. No, Kamari. Ronso youth use force, seek vengeance for fallen Ronso. Garrick lead angry Ronso youth, decide to take revenge on Guado. Garrick go to battle, now Garrick climb peak, tell mountain battle plan. And you're just gonna wait here? Garrick hear voice of mountain. Garrick change mind. Hmm. 
Kimari hopes so. Remember that there, what Kimari and just said. if he doesn't? Kimari, stop Bronzo youth. That's crazy. Elder Kimari have no choice. Kimari give Yuna something. Oh, you've got something for me, really. Kimari search mountain, but find only sphere. Kimari not know if found sphere is one Yuna seek. Oh. But Kimari happy if sphere help Yuna. So that sphere, Kamari will only give you that sphere if you gave him good advice in the previous chapters. If not, he won't give you anything. Also, just a note, that cut that cutscene there, he specifically said that he was confident. He he's staying behind here. He's confident that Garrick will hear the voice of the mountain and change his mind. And we're like, ah, I don't know about that. So we're gonna go up. But here we get the trainer dress sphere. Trainer is really cool. Trainer was Kimari. originally Probably my favorite dress sphere when I very first started playing. Not not sure anymore, but you need yeah. this isn't good. There's still time. Should we follow them? Yeah, let's go. We're going up. Maybe we can reason with him. If you not go, Kimari think Garrick listen. Maybe. If not, Kimari deal with Garrick. Alright. If he doesn't listen, Kimari will deal with Garrick. Alright, that's fine. Check it out. So Shinra's over there as well in the background. That's pretty cool. And we start this mission. So this is Battle Blockade. Garrick, in his hatred of the Guado, has decided to launch an attack. Meet him on the summit of Mount Gagazan and stop him. By force, if that's what it takes. Now, here's, here is where the game gets very, very, very interesting. If you choose not to do this, if you if you let this happen... David, we've done everything perfectly, but Kamari still balls up and they've all marched off, right? If you choose not to do this, you will let them attack the Guado. And in this game, the... Guado will become extinct. Yep, the Ronso will kill them all. Pretty cool. And one of us so far is going to see that happen. However, this one is not. So the uh, pad, this is Garrick's work. Go to destination, fix pad there. Uh, so this lady, you know, the, the one at Kamari's side is the only one left. Garrick, go to summit. This reminds me of after Seymour killed them all in the previous game and we had Dark Anima here. All right, uh, so we're going to go up. So I basically lied to you guys in a previous episode. You guys will remember in chapter one when we first came to Gagazet, I was like, hey guys, yeah, uh, you never have to walk up the mountain. I was wrong. You you walk up it now. There are no chests, very little dialogue. Basically, you got these these youths uh, marching up, which we'll deal with. But first, what I want to do is very quickly, we got the Undying Storm garment grid very recently. Why don't we fill it up with all of our new classes? So we got Dark Knight, we got Alchemist, Gun Mage is great for Mighty Guard as well, so we'll grab that. I really do like that. We've got Trainer is new, and Psychic is also very new. So there we go. That's a pretty cool grid now that we've got. And uh, even better, let's equip all of our girls with Trainer and see how they function. Let's get rid of Buddy for this one. This is a little bit too serious for you here, Buddy. All right, and uh, we'll move on up, and we'll see what happens as soon as we get a battle. Uh, for what it's worth, Charm Bangle is totally OP for this mission. It just means you never get into a fight ever. Run so youth, wait long time for battle. All right, and then he's running off. Uh, I don't have a Charm Bangle equipped. We're just going to try it regularly. You guys will remember from 10 that this is a long walk up this snowy mountain. A long walk. Uh, Kamari speak wisdom, but Ronzo vengeance cannot be held back. Now, there's a funny thing where you want to move quickly. All right, here we go. We got, we got a, we got a, uh, a battle straight away. Now you might wonder, Winter Potatoes, why did you make us all trainers just then? Well, check it out. That's because this is this is almost like their special dress fears. This class is unique and has different effects depending on the girl who's using it. So it's the same class, but it has three variants. And you can see that immediately here, okay? We're currently in control of Pain, and Pain gets flurry skills. And you'll see Pain is a badass, like, birdman, so with a parrot, hawk, awesome thing. I don't know what kind of bird that is, right? And she gets HP flurry, which means the bird will restore health to the entire pie, or carrier flurry, which is instant death. She starts with that, which I don't want to try. Well, HP flurry. So, uh, the girls will never do anything here. It's just their pets that will do stuff. So, Yuna gets the dog, Diagoro. Kogoro, see? Use Kogoro's skills. So, Kogoro Blaze or Holy Kogoro. That's your, that's your Jimbo's pet from the previous game. And then, uh, oh, Pain's back again. And then Riku gets, of course, a squatter monkey with a badass hat uh, called Geeky. So, Geeky can damage and darkness, damage and steal, damage and steal Gil or raise everyone's strength and defense, and she can cheer. How cool is that? How cool is that? Now, their auto attacks are with the pets as well. Not even the, the, just the regular ability. See that? The pet attacked. 
Oh my god. So you can have the bird running, you can have the monkey. Look at this monkey's animation. Ah, oh, it's so cool. Oh my god. Now here's the thing. This bo this this mob's actually pretty dangerous. So let's see what we can do here. Let's actually uh, put some darkness on it so it's not hitting us anymore. And then with Yuna, sometimes inflict darkness. Let's see because in, in case uh, Riku's on. Want to show mommy something? Oh, geeky gouge. See, the monkey basically climbs up and gouges its eyes out. Mugger geeky. Ah, oh, this is just so cool. It's been a long time since we've seen a sphere change animation, so screw it. Why not? Awesome. All right, and of course, Mighty Guard. Not knowing is the fun part. Oh, we killed it with a drain. A drain of all things. That was awesome. Good job. I was like, oh, I just drained to get a bit of MP back. It didn't even work. It didn't even have an MP. But there you go. That's basically one of the toughest things you can fight on the mountain. I'm just going to cut our way up now. Every time we find a Runso, I'll talk to him. Now, there's kind of a weird incentive to run up as fast as possible here because if you don't, the Runso will get past the exit and you'll never be able to read their dialogue. Oh, yeah. Killed it with a holy Kogoro. This Ronzo says, What will the mountain tell Garrick? Ronzo will watch with eyes. Ah. See, I, the, the Ronzo idea of, like, the mountain speaking to them is kind of weird. Like, it's super weird, actually. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, how does it speak? They listen to the wind? What is it? It's kind of so in tune with nature. Now, the kind of cool thing here as well is... Uh, so this guy says, Listen to the wind's war cry. This is the cry of Ronzo vengeance. Um, so what's kind of cool is because of the direction all the Ronso are moving, you always know the way up. You're not going to get a random encounter and then accidentally get turned around like it happened in the previous game because you sort of know where everyone's moving to. Guado must be destroyed. Only then will Ronso calm come. So here we get another one of the pads and what you want to do is just step back on it. And that allows you to teleport, if you like, back down to the mountain gate. It's not as important as with Seymour in the previous game or anything. Uh, you'll get another safe sphere up ahead. So, in battle, all Ronso must stand with Garrick and crush hated Guado. Alright, sure thing, sure thing. And then, see, there's that guy up there, and it's like, what dialogue did you have? I mean, to, to speak to him, you'd have to skip them. Speak to him, and whoever was before him, perhaps. And then, deliberately wait. I mean, that's the kind of, uh, uh, for all the rest to get all the rest of the dialogue. That's the kind of thing that I feel like, I mean, you might think that this is the same character with the same dialogue, but it's totally not. It's a different screen. Hi, so I'm going to want to stop Garrick. Hi, so I'm going to want the impossible. Actually, maybe it's not a totally different guy because we know from, like, Besaid that they have the technology to move NPCs from one place to another. But still, Guado die or Ronzo die. Only two paths. No, you idiot. That's not true. Maybe they wouldn't be doing this if we hadn't spent so long buttering them all up in the previous chapters. You know, just being nice. Now, do you remember that in Chapter 1, I haven't reminded you guys of this for a while, but in Chapter 1, there was a woman who said she was going to make... Okay, in the previous game, there was a woman who said she was going to make a statue of us with great horn on head, remember? And then that never actually happened. In this game, there's a woman again who's like, hey, I'm making a sculpture. Um, well, we haven't seen her. She disappeared in Chapter 2. So this isn't actually for the mission. However, if we climb up here, all right, uh, and it could be uh, it could be very unclear about where to go, right? Like, are we climbing back up to the ruins where Final Fantasy X II started, or what? But here you actually see that there is a statue being built, and we can talk to her. She says, "Well, creating statue easier to forget hatred of Guado." So she's choosing to do that instead of fighting. Uh, now the way forward is actually back down the cliff, and I'll I'll cut us there in a second. But actually, there is also a hidden little thing I do want to point out over at the hot springs. So I'm just going to show you guys that too. And of course, we get a save sphere here as well. What's kind of cool as you walk into the hot springs is you can see that, look, that's the statue there. Just on the right. How weird is that? That's the, the run so making it. But check it out. Shinra actually, when we loaded into this map, dropped a comm sphere here at the hot spring. That's it. You didn't ever have to come here. I just wanted to show you guys that that had actually happened, that you dropped one. Uh, and now what we're going to do is continue climbing the mountain. All right, okay, so here we go. Uh, we're back in this cave up here. 
Uh, and again, the game's really not clear which direction you're supposed to be going, especially now that there's no Ronzo, like, patrolling through. Uh, the Ronzo who has stood here before as well, of course, is better. I suppose a bit of a hint is the teleporter pads, right? Like, you know that there's another one here, so maybe that's, that's a thing. Now, funny enough, in X2, there's actually an extra teleporter pad right at the very, very, very top. I can't remember it being there in X, uh, in just regular X. But yeah, you remember you come up these, like, mushroom little rock things here. The only time we ever have to do this in this game. Come all the way up. Oh, no, it was always here, wasn't it? I don't know. But where we fought the Sanctuary Keeper is where we will meet Garrick Ronso at the peak of the mountain. In fact, so high up the mountain, he's basically over it, looking at Zanakut. And that's a weird idea to me, too, that the Ronso have got, like, these lives that they live where they regularly see Zanakut. But having said all that, the way they're going to cut these scenes in a second... Oh, hold on, we got this pad as well. The way they're going to cut these scenes in a second kind of is to eliminate the fact that Zanakin is clearly in sight, and you'll see that in a moment. So here we go. This is the top of the mountain. Do we stop the Ronso? Well, let us see. Ronso, hold anger no longer. Ronso, you fearless, go to battle with Guado. And if I ask you not to go? Garrick, not listen. Garrick, cover ears. Then I must stop you. Ah, oh, Yuna sounds so Why good in this scene. Why summoner defend Guado? Why? Who punish Guado if Ronso not go? I don't care about your defending or your punishing. I just don't want to see Kamari looking sad. Oh. The same goes for all the Ronso and the Guado too. She's so sweet in this scene. Summoner, not stop Garrick with empty words. If I can stop you, will you forget this talk of vengeance? Very well, Garrick swear to Mountain. I figured it'd come to this. Yeah. At least he let us cut to the chase. Well, more or less. I summon a Yuna see true Ronzo strength. So we're gonna fight Garrick. Uh, now, this fight is really cool for many, many, many re reasons. Number one. Uh, remember in X, we had Buran and Yankee. And in the Buran and Yankee stuff, depending on how you did in the game, um, their power would change. Remember their, like, power level and the way that you'd fought them, they could either be much easier or much harder. Uh, well, that's actually very much true here as well, um, for these Ronso. So, depending, you know all that advice we were given to the Ronso? Depending on how we treated them and how much respect we won from them, affects how defensively Garrick will play. So, we're gonna, we're gonna start here. Uh, so we're going to use Geeky, and we're going to raise one character's strength and defense, and we're going to raise Kimari's strength and defense. That's right. We brought Kimari along. So check it out. Yuna couldn't convince with empty words. She couldn't do it. What did Kimari say at the bottom? He said that he would step in if Yuna couldn't convince him with, with, with simple words. And that's it. That, that's what's happened here. So you're damn right. I'm bringing Kamari in. So, of course, in the regular game, Kamari would not be a component of this fight. He uses jump, as you can see there. But I off screen, I, you know, I prepared the stuffs and I made sure that he was here for this fight with us. So, uh, and I got rid of pain. So we got Riku, Yuna, and Kamari. And Kamari deserves to be here. Um, so, Ronso Yu's been blinded. Let's try and blind Garrick as well. Oh my god, is that Garrick dead? That was not Garrick dead. Alright, yeah, that was the youth. Uh, so Kamari's got only got jump. We haven't trained him very much. He's basically just spec to hit hard. We've got our trainers also running around here as well, and we're just going to keep them using different things. Let's use Marga. See what we can steal from him. Um, and yeah, this is basically the Garrick fight. So he will be, you know, much more defensive. He's using protective magic on himself here, and it basically just means the devs know that that makes he him easier to kill. So uh, that is only happening because we had done so much stuff. Now, the funny thing is, if you don't choose to fight Garrick here and you let him leave, actually, a lot of players have incentive to do that. And why do they have incentive to do that? Well, because they want all the Guado dead. Why do they want all the Guado dead? Well, because of the way it affects Guado Salam. So, as soon as this fight's over, how about we go check that place out too? Look at that jump! A thousand damage. Oh my god, I kind of just want to let Kamari go hard, go ham here. It's so good. Look at his big weighty hits landing. Look at that. Ah, oh, it's so good. I'm also glad that we got the trainers going on and we're not like stupidly OP. What you can actually run in this fight to make things a bit easier for yourself is a white mage. I've really done very little white mage stuff. But if you run a white mage, she can just be dispel spamming him and get rid of the protect, get rid of the shell, get rid of all that stuff. I think Kamari's going to kill him with this jump. Ah, oh, he did! That's amazing. Ah, oh, I couldn't have asked for it to be any better. Go, Kamari! I remind you at the start of this mission as well, Kamari promised us 
Enough vengeance, Garrick. That Garrick would listen to the mountain. Ronso, keep word. Yuna defeat Garrick in battle. Garrick honor Yuna's wish, not go to battle. Wow. He flipped. Thank you. Garrick not need thanks. Mountain was right. Garrick spoke to Mountain of plan, but Mountain silent. Gaga said no. Garrick wrong. Garrick go against will of Mountain if Yuna not stop him. Garrick grateful to Yuna. Oh, so that's why he said he didn't need thanks. He wasn't being an asshole. He was saying he should be thanking her. I love the way this game sets up these like minor villains that, you know, end up not being so bad in the end. But yeah, so there you go. He, he listened. That's it. That's it. It's over. Good job, Kamari. We score Wishbringer Garment Grid, which is a pretty cool grid. I'll show you guys in a second. And that's Gagazette done. So who is ready for, quite genuinely, the best stuff? Who is ready for answers about the man we saw in the sphere, in the prison. Who is ready for more epic lore about Zanakin versus Bavel? Who is ready for more LeBlanc Syndicate? We're going to Guado Salam and we're gonna have a surprise meeting with Macon. Seems like the Syndicate's on vacation. I wonder what's up, should we go ask LeBlanc? I think we should.